One month ago today, on St. Patrick's Day, the high holy day of St. Patrick's Day, a friend sent me a uh, text message about a conversation between God the Father and God the Son. So Jesus looked across the table and he asked God the Father, where have you been these past two years? God replied, I've been in Ireland. Jesus, with a shocked look, said, so there's been a pandemic raging for two years and now a horrible war erupting in Ukraine and you've been in Ireland? What have you been doing? God leaned over and whispered, working from home, son, working from home. (laughs) Working from home and yet here we are back home. And so when I read that little story, I put it aside as a sort of introduction to this Easter homily. Where has God been these past two years is a question that lots of folks have asked. And yet the fact is, the reality is, God hasn't moved. But most everyone has been moved, affected, impacted, maybe changed one way or the other by the events of these past two years. And yet, here we are, back, to ch- back in church together after three years to celebrate Easter 22. If you remember, we, there was no celebration for Easter 20 and not much for 21. And yet here we are today because we believe, in spite of all the personal and communal and national and global struggles, God is present. And working from home, working from the kingdom, working within us to bring us strength and courage and comfort and peace and renewed Easter hope. The new life, that new life is always possible. You know, Jesus never told us that he was going to take away the cross, the challenges, the sufferings from us in this life, individually or collectively. But he did say, if you carry the cross, your cross, whatever it might be with me, if we carry it together, there will be light and new light. Come to me, all you who are burdened, and I will. The cross will be lighter. So the message of Christmas is always the same. God is with us. God is with us at home or away. He comes to dwell in our broken humanity. And the constant message of Easter that I would suggest that we focus upon today is what this gospel just tells us. Five simple, profound words. While it was still dark. While it was still dark. While it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the empty tomb and found that the stone was rolled away. She and the apostles didn't have an immediate and complete understanding of all that had and was and would be happening. But they paid attention. They paid attention to the little signs and invitations that they found, such as the unexplained details about the burial cloths, and the race between Peter and John to get to the tomb. When you think about it, there is so much in life, so much in the world, so much in our family situations that we don't understand. So many times we wonder, where is God? And we discover, hopefully as people of faith, we discover that God is found in the mysteries of life. And in the large and the small signs of his presence, the invitations to see deeper into life, to see deeper into the symbols that surround us with or without explanation. So I would like to offer four connections about paying attention to the multiple Easter messages, signs of life that God offers to us to think about and reflect upon. The first sign is from the liturgy of the Passion 
that took place right here in Cure of Ars on Good Friday, so less than 48 hours ago. During the reading of the Passion narrative, all of a sudden, the lights went out, the power went out due to an accident that happened on Merrick Road. And so for about five to seven minutes, the Passion was being proclaimed, shouted then from here in the sanctuary because the microphones were out. And it was no coincidence that after Jesus had died, but before the narrative ended, while it was still dark, all of a sudden, the power was back on. It was like a planned, dramatic production. We can take away many Easter messages from that unique set of circumstances, but the point is that God is always speaking to us, using good things and not so good things to, to, draw, get, to get our attention. Our job is to pay attention as much as possible to the signs of life and light that can concretely connect us to where God is in our lives. Another sign is this. It always amazes me that virtually every time of the year, this time of the year, during the, around the Easter season, usually just before Easter, Hollywood produces a film, produces a movie that connects to resurrection and new life. So yes, some movie stars in the super secular Hollywood have faith in God and faith in the goodness of humanity and produce or act in inspirational Easter movies. Easter movies such as, you may remember, God is not dead, Heaven is for real, Son of God, Breakthrough, Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ, among others. And this year, seems to me, the Easter Hollywood film is entitled Father Stu. Father Stu uh, stars the famous actor Mark Wahlberg. And, Wahlberg, and uh, Father Stu is a true story about redemption and salvation, a transition from sin and selfishness to new life, and New Beginnings, a man who went from being a broken boxer and actor to a priest who inspired thousands of folks before he died in 2014. Wahlberg said that he had a passion for doing this movie because, as he said, the only way to survive in this world and in this day and age is to have some faith, some faith that gives us direction and motivation and hope even when we've gone off the track, as he himself did. He hopes that the film will inspire many folks to have, who have lost faith in God or faith in Catholicism to return to faith, even though there will always be some darkness in every human institution. So an unusual message of light in the midst of darkness, even from Hollywood. The third sign of Easter life in our world is I would call a political one, a political one based on President Zelensky of Ukraine. He has risen, not from the dead, but from a checkered past and being a comedian and not the best politician to a Churchill type of figure, a Churchillian figure uniting his country in courageous resistance to the horrible evil of a satanic Putin, who wears a crucifix around his neck, but murders more people than punches Pilate. Zelensky has inspired the world with Easter hope, even, obviously as we know, even while it is still dark, very dark, in Ukraine. And, and at all masses and all church services throughout the world, we pray for the suffering people of Ukraine. Finally, a personal example of light in the midst of darkness. Just 10 days ago, my sister and brother-in-law and I were involved in a horrible car accident that has left my brother-in-law on life support in an ICU. While it's still very, still dark, very dark for him, God sent these incredible life-saving surgeons and caregivers to save his life after he coded. And because of those signs of love, the Easter message applies even to him. Mark, he is alive, hallelujah. 
So on this Easter Sunday, I think it's very important for all of us to be on the lookout, to be on the lookout for the many glimmers and many signs of light and life and hope, even in the midst of darkness. Easter doesn't cancel the cross, nor does it totally erase the pain and the darkness that exists in our world, in our family, in our church, in our lives. Good Friday and Easter are, well, a package deal. You can't have one without the other, really. Today is a reminder that we are a resurrection people. A resurrection people who have come back to church after three years now, who have the power to resurrect those things in our lives with God's grace, those things that have been buried, those things that have been in a tomb because of some darkness or some sin or some loss, as we, in this Mass, as we do every year, renew our baptismal promises, reject, rejecting Satan and all his works and all his empty promises. So the invitation from the Gospel today is get rid of the burial cloths and put on the garment of praise and thanksgiving. Scripture tells us that God has turned our mourning into dancing even though there is still darkness. So today is the day we, you might say, resurrect our dreams, our faith, our peace, and whatever it is that has been buried over these last couple of years. Today is the day we return to Mass, we leave the fears and darkness of COVID aside. We come back to God and the sacraments on a regular basis because, you know why? Because God is at home. God is at home with us, for all of us, even though it is still dark. So, happy Easter, amen, hallelujah. And let us now stand as we renew our baptismal promises.